Hello, here we are once again with Muki Tenenbaum. We are exploring, as many of you already know through these videos, his philosophy, his disillusionism, and in particular, his misalgic theory that explains human behavior as aversion to suffering. Month after month, for almost two years now, we've been trying to apply this rather abstract concept to facts in everyday life, to the news even, as some developments occurred in the world. We discuss the still very much ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the still very much ongoing war in the Ukraine. And today we are going to illustrate part of the philosophy by applying it to a problem that is a very concrete problem that has been discussed by philosophers in the past. It's the problem of drugs, of those substances that we consume and that somehow induced uh, what you would call a, an altered state of consciousness. And of course, we are going to try and deal with drugs from a disillusionist point of view and from a misalgic point of view and see what happens. Well, uh, when we're talking about altered, uh, you know, situations, not only drugs do that to us. In fact, uh, going to the supermarket hungry will, <laughs> will, will produce the same effect. Or uh, sitting with, uh, I, I don't want to start, you know, your brother, your, your mother-in-law, but one in law, an, an in law <laughs> argument. Um, and the, what, what is special about it is that you, those altered states are really, forced upon you, that they, they happen to you. Mm. They are not programmed. In fact, you probably would like to avoid them. Those are ones, the ones that we're talking about drugs, is that you want that and the drug normally gets you there, yes? Mm. So those, they, they are voluntary at least, uh, they, they say in the Latin, actio libera in causa. At, at the beginning, you had the freedom of, of choosing to use it or not. Um, you know, when we were talking about that, I, I, there is a story, and again, it's not, not sure that it's true, but uh, it, it's, it's still nice. Um, the word assassin, okay, uh, uh, derives from, uh, and that we know, from uh, the, the group uh, of hashashins. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the theory says that they used to hashish before they went into murdering people. People who know the drugs knows that that's not very possible. I mean, people <laughs> under the under hashish are unable to plan, <laughs> let, let, let alone remember what they're supposed to do. And of course, they will be uh, much slower in their movement. <laughs> they will need somebody who is probably more drugged than them to be able to be killed. <laughs> um, it makes more sense that they, they drug the others to kill them. <laughs> uh, so uh, th th there is a story that probably it comes from some, uh, something else, but what I'm trying to say is that the, the idea is written, this is written uh, by Marco Polo in, in, in the 13th century. So we already know that drugs were used in the 13th century, and we know from other, uh, many other uh, sources, but this one is, is, is nice, is a nice illustration about what we're talking about, the, the assassins. Uh, First of all, um, why do people seek altered states? Why would somebody want to be in an altered state? There are many answers, but the real answer is, and we as a solution is no, running away from suffering. They averting suffering by doing that. What, are they successful or not? That's another issue. Uh, do they do, uh, um, do, do they making the right choice? Again, it's another issue. Here I want to, to make clear something that I made clear many times. This illusionism has no morals. It's not mm -hmm. in favor of morals, not against morals. Anything that helps you uh, sleepwalk, fine. Is morals, morals. Not morals, not morals. We don't care. Uh, I don't care uh, at all. <laughs> it, it, uh, you do whatever. It, it, is it legal or is it illegal? Well, then you have the guy with the gun and we spoke mm -hmm. about the guy with the gun. So again, legal or illegal, has to do with part of the way you choose. But it is clear to me that people are running away from suffering by using these drugs. And it depends on the kind of drugs that you use, Florencio. And, mm. I, and I would like first to, 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 um, to 
bring in the four kind of drugs we're talking about. Um, and the, the, the first one is empathogens. No. The second one is hallucino uh, hallucinogens, mm -hmm. or ones that makes hallucinations. Uh, painkillers, no. or calmant, or you know, it's painkiller is a is a is a tricky word. You know, in in Spanish you say calmantes. It's more mm -hmm. on the uh, on, more on the on on the I, I would say on the pains of the soul, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, not not just pain. And of course, finally, the stimulants. No. Okay. Uh, in the first group, we have ecstasy, and it's it's the most common one. People take it, and what they feel is empathy towards others, and uh, it may be one way. That means they are they they could be empathic, and the other one not. Or in many cases, a group of people take the empathogens, and everybody feels oh. close to each other. Uh, and then here in the empathogens, what they probably running away is from. Uh, the the lack of uh, relations with people, the the difficulty saying uh, being being sincere with other people, the the scare of uh, social probably social issues that uh, keep them out of the possibility of sleepwalking, which is the best way of not to suffer. Yes, uh, there is still not a drug made to sleepwalk, Florencio. You know, we mm. the the, mm. the guy who will invent it probably will will <laughs> solve all these issues because sleepwalking does that, although. A, a pill that sends you to sleep probably does the same the same job. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the empathogens. Uh, then you have the the ones that uh, cause hallucinations. That's uh, the most common one is LSD, but there are many others. There are there are the the, the uh, mushrooms uh, and hallucinogenic mushrooms. And what happens is that people see things that are are not here. Yes, they see colors and and, and figures. And then they, you have the painkillers, the ones that when people are really anxious and have a big anxiety and things are, are bad for them and they are, they are nervous, they cannot sleepwalk once again. And then this allows them to do that. And finally, uh, there is uh, the stimulants. Cocaine is the main one. Mm -hmm. And here you have alcohol does would, as a stimulant and as a painkiller, depending on which yeah. use they use it. Uh, all of them are uh, are, the, are those are the types of drugs we want to talk about. Please, Florencio, what is your opinion? Yeah, it's, it's especially interesting to connect each type of substance to a certain type of suffering. Uh, as you were speaking, I was also thinking about alcohol, and I can speak out of my own experience, covering some sort of pathogenic function because uh, those of us who suffer from uh, shame and who are somehow uh, shy and timid, we have used many times alcohol uh, in order to induce ourselves uh, an easier sleepwalking through social situations. It's easier to sink and it's easier to sleepwalk for us without that suffering. So I guess alcohol there also works as mitigating shyness or mitigating shame. I wanted to ask you about hallucinogens in particular. What type of suffering would you say they respond to? Because the rest of the categories, I think, are easier to grasp. Well, this is the interesting one. In my opinion, and what I think is they, they're running away of boredom or the fear mm -hmm. of boredom. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. be, but <laughs> beware, because in each one of these categories, the guys using them, because of the way society looks at, at drugs, they will have their own discourse. People say things all no. the time. They, <laughs> they, 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 they just keep saying things. Mm -hmm. And the epics comes to help, you know, so they will say, no, I want to have a consciousness. I want to understand the inner workings of, my, of my, myself. I want to be in contact with the supreme being. All this is just to tell they just want they are bored and they just want they're curious. I mean, the curiosity will take them there and, and they just want to be somewhere else. Yes, it's airports are now full with people. You know, I don't know if you know Heathrow is, is a disaster. <laughs> so they they take in fact they call it a trip. Mm -hmm. They call it a trip. It, it's a way of running away. Running away of what? 
sometimes of reality, which is very harsh. And sometimes it's because of boredom. In none of the cases, it has to do with spirituality. This is just blah, blah. <laughs> there is no spirituality or things like that. This is, this is really pretext, which is fine. This is the way they avert the suffering of people looking at them badly because they are using uh, these drugs. Uh, I have to say that those of us who consume alcohol usually have a similar discourse. Uh, we discuss how important this vintage is, how different a single malt whiskey is from a uh, regular scotch. So we also have, I would say, these epics surrounding the drugs we take. Of course, we take them to alleviate suffering, not because they belong to this or that vintage. Uh, well, yes, well, I am, I am not a drinker, so I don't drink alcohol, not because I'm against it, but because I just don't, don't, cannot stand the taste of anything that has alcohol, especially wine. The smell, the smell is too much to me. And I always wonder why somebody would like to drink something that is obviously bitter and burning and not good. <laughs> but again, I am, I, 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 we're talking about flavors, flavors that everybody has, the way they taste, the taste they have. It's not, not, to, not to argue about it. But it allowed me to look into the, this world from the outside. Uh, in general, not not with good results because you know people start getting drunk and then start making certain kind of jokes. I don't want to say stupid <laughs> jokes. I don't. I don't mean stupid jokes. I mean to me they, they seem a little bit <laughs> childish or stupid. And then I am I am out of the I, out of the loop and I leave. So mm. I understand that many many people who may not like the taste of alcohol, who will not enjoy the alcohol, will take alcohol just to be inside to sink. be outside yeah. to, to sink to be able to as you say to sleepwalk now you're walking alone home back yes uh, mm. by yourself uh, and uh, you know uh, it, it's not it's, it, it may be not fun to me it was not very nice but it was not unbearable of course then you can become very popular because you become the designated driver <laughs> that, that's another side of, uh, of not drinking mm. Since we are discussing, I would say, the social side to drug use, and we started speaking about the 13th century and hashish back in the times of Marco Polo and the hashashin, I wanted to ask you, is there something different about our societies when it comes to drugs, about the present time when it comes to drugs? Or do you think most of what we are discussing is just timeless and transhistoric? Well, in, in, in to a degree, yes. But there are two main differences between those times, the 13th century and now. The main one, the, the two main ones are, the first one is people knew each other. I mean, besides people who live in cities that were not many, people knew each other. They didn't need an, a, 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 an alcohol. Anonymity did not exist. Today, do we have anonymity? And anonymity is a problem. And it, mm. it, you, you want to sink yourself. You want to, you want to sleepwalk like other people. So you, you, first of all, there are many ways to do it. And one of them is to imitate. So you, mm. people take, you take. Yes, that's a... And the second one that is more important, it is the, the immediacy, the impatience that, uh -huh. the, that is part of our, our, our life, which is not good or bad. It's just simply one thing in which... One, one thing in which we allow ourselves to take a pill when you have a headache. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the 19th century, if somebody says, I have a headache, and they say, very nice. Anything <laughs> else? Uh, and the guys, wait, you have a headache. Wait till it goes away, if it ever yes, does. So, that's it. And that was it. Yes. Uh, I remember when I was a child, I would say, it's very hot. And my mother says, what? There was no air conditioning. Very hot. Interesting. Interesting information. That's it. The, the, but again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, listen, this is not a stoic uh, mm. propaganda. I don't care. I mean, uh, it's good that we have pills to, 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 to get rid of air conditioning is to, to, to get out of the cold. Um, but this same way allows us to, if I want to feel empathic, I take a pill in an hour. I'm empathic. Oh. Uh, I no. want to forget uh, my girlfriend left me. I'll take alcohol in four, four drinks after that. It's gone. Uh, I, I am very nervous. I'm then even if I'm very nervous, I take a pill and after 20 minutes I'm pill. And if you take cocaine, 
Of course, mm. that five minutes or I don't know, 20 seconds, I don't know the time it takes to take cocaine, cocaine kicks in and you are, you are in. So that immediacy, it's very, it's very different. Of course, there is also the possibility of getting those drugs. But again, uh, because the, the look, look how drug, the drug dealing is such a great business. It's because it's illegal. There is a guy with a gun on the other side. And on this side, there is a lot of people trying to run away from suffering immediately. No, no. not in the long term. No. Listen, you have, to, you have a problem. You can go to, uh, to your psychologist and it will take you probably, I don't know, five, seven le- or eight, eight meetings until <laughs> you can solve the problem. Uh, how long does it take you to take uh, to take cocaine or alcohol? Nothing. Uh, so, uh, so or, or, or a prescription, right? A, a legal drug administered by a psychiatrist that would take. Yes, 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 of course. We are not talking about it right away. Yes. It, there is another important thing, and it, this is what is why are what is the problem of taking drugs? What, what, mm. What's the issue? Why is not everything is right? And so there is two main problems mm. besides it's illegal or immoral. If somebody mm. thinks it's immoral. Illegal. There are two, two, uh, two problems with it. The first one is that besides the painkillers, besides the one that, that, that calms you down, under the other three, taking decisions are not probably going to be no. good. That no, means the way, you, the, the way you weigh, in fact, you want now, now, you want the pain to go away now, you probably are making a bad, a, a, a bad bet. Better to try to solve the problem, even a pain. If you take a painkiller, painkiller, you may have a cancer and you are not mm-hmm. going to the doctor because that they immediately uh, uh, solve the problem. So when you, when you have the, the, the issue of um, how to, uh, this creates a situation in which your decisions are bad decisions, not the same with painkillers. If you have an attack of anxiety mm-hmm. and you take a pill, probably your decisions are going to be better. Be better. But again, if this is the only thing you do, probably. This is not going to be one. This is one. The other one is, has to do with not, 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 uh, not long term, but short term. And that mm. means that most of those, of those drugs have an after effect, yeah. and which is very, not very nice. That after effect should work, in fact, for you to, not, to, to stop not doing it. But the next time, our ability to forget includes the after effect. So if you take an empathogen, you have a down for, for 24 hours. And if you take cocaine, you have a down for how long and alcohol, of course. So we know all we this, know hangovers. <laughs> you know hangovers. So all that kind of uh, th- those problems uh, are uh, um, uh, make make the, the issue problematic. And and again, if we want to run away from suffering, everybody knows how to do it better. But sometimes, you know, if your decision is made under under the need of that drug, it's gone. Uh, I, it, yes. I just want to take you back to imitation and similar situations. You mentioned habits before in the conversation, and we started by saying that these were <coughs> voluntary inductions of altered states. But I want to ask you about those situations in, war, in which will does not play a part. And I'm thinking about addiction mainly when it comes to drugs like alcohol or cocaine, and maybe also what you described as the habitual uses or just simple imitation. What happens when it's not voluntary? First of all, there is a myth about addiction. Okay, of course, drugs create addiction, but I would say besides alcohol that has a stronger tendency to to create addiction, and so does a cigarette uh, Mm -hmm. for 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 that matter, uh, cocaine, for example, the United Nations says that it's only six to eight percent of the consumers of cocaine mm-hmm. are addicted. Uh, that, that doesn't cause, cause that much, mm-hmm. much addiction. And um, uh, the, hallucin- the ones that cause uh, halluc- hallucinogens, hallucinogens <laughs> that the LSD and so forth do not cause addiction at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, cannabis, there is an argument about it, but it's, if it's still, it's a very light addiction. And, but there is addiction to, to painkillers, of course, that we know mm-hmm. very well. And we, in fact, we're living into a big, big problem of painkillers. But these are painkillers, physically painkillers, not the ones that calm you down. But everything is, is, but mostly the problem has to do with imitations. You know, when your mother on, used to say to you, I don't want you to go out with these people because they use drugs and you will start using drugs. And you say, well, don't you know me, mother? I know better. That's not true. <laughs> She was right. 
because you are going to imitate it. Not all of them, but most of us will probably do that. Same thing with alcohol, same thing with any, any drug use, and uh, uh, same thing with people. It, it works also for people who like basketball. It, it doesn't matter, yes? We, we, you, you will become part of it by imitation, by trying mm -hmm. to be part of that, of that group. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so I have to say that uh, once in a while some people are, are right and those mothers and fathers uh, <laughs> uh, uh, were right in their assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, did it work? I, I, <laughs> I, I am very much not sure. Amazing. Well, we're long past our usual time, but I think we've covered a whole lot of things about drugs from a disillusionist point of view. Maybe we'll go back to these subjects in future videos. Maybe we will. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, comment and subscribe.